good rain last night, so uh, things are a little happier than they were. But actually, there's been a lot of growth in the last six or seven days uh, since I did the the last video. This is my lettuce garden. It's uh, under an eave up on a patio, so it doesn't get too much sunlight. But it rained hard enough where it got rained on, which is kind of nice. And over here, also on the patio, are my cucumbers, and they've, they've put out their real leaves now. They're starting to grow. It's been nice and hot, and it's going to be even hotter. And that's another thing that helps cucumbers to grow. And we'll take a little walk, slowly, so we don't make you dizzy. There's a little bit of wind today, so you might not be able to hear me real well. Not as bad as the other day, though. There is cat grass. Cats won't eat it, they eat the regular grass. And here we have the uh, the marigold that came up on its own. Three of them, three or four, maybe even more of them. We got music box, which is about to bloom. There we go. Can't wait to see that. And some Canterbury bells and a lot of things that I have to rip out <laughs> because they're weeds. Okay, I'm going to turn around here. Close your eyes if you get dizzy. Here's my little tomato plants. So proud of these. I think that's uh, purple calabash there. And I think that's Paul Robeson there. Purple calabash is actually blooming first. So we'll see if I'm right about which one it is. Uh, but I'm really proud of them because I grew these from seed. And I don't know if you can see here, but how big they're getting. Yeah, that's nice. Here's my little pepper plants, which I, I have to give away this week or do something with them because they're they're not progressing. If you look at them in comparison to the pepper plants that got there we go. Pepper plants that actually got planted, here's a big difference. Those are uh, tame jalapenos there. And over here we have orchid peppers. And here are my carrots from pelleted seed tricolor. And I'm told that not all colors of carrots taste good, but I can always throw them in soup. No worries about that one. Okay, uh, potatoes. Purple potatoes. Oh, those are purple. Yeah, those are purple. And those are the Red Norlands over there. Still no blooms from the Red Norlands. Sometimes they don't bloom though. But these purple ones sure did try to bloom early. And that usually means that they're starting to form little potatoes underground. Okay, let's take a little walk here. Maybe we'll go into the garden. I have this garden um, surrounded by chicken wire. And also a little piece of plastic mesh bunnies out. So we have some very determined bunnies in this neighborhood. There we go, there's a plastic brush. Okay, we have over here corn. This is country gentleman corn. And it has about another week to go under the mesh. Because the birds, I think, will still try to pluck it out of the ground at this stage. There we go. We had a good rain last night, like I said, and uh, things are a lot happier than they were because you can water until you're blue in the face and absolutely nothing is going to happen but a good rain makes everything grow overnight. And we were already getting good growth because of the heat. 
another shot of my tomatoes. I'm really proud of those. <laughs> and over here, these are volunteer pumpkins. They were red warty things last year and I left a few red warty things in the garden because they are so productive that I just ran out of uses for them. And uh, there's a pumpkin shell from last year right there. Is that my hand? Yeah. And they they came up, so there you go. You got red warty thing pumpkins coming up. And over here, there's sweet 100. Starting this little cage out. By the end of the season, it should be all the way up to the top of the cage, at least. And over here, we have. Marconi pepper. It's a sweet pepper. It looks like a hot pepper. It's long and thin and has a wonderful flavor. You can fry fry it with uh, hash browns or something. It's really, really good. Here is Racer Plus. Doing well. Racer Plus is my favorite pumpkin. It's a short vine pumpkin. And I didn't grow them last year and I missed them. <laughs> um, as far as I know, you can only get them from Johnny's Seed Supply. Uh, they are something that Johnny's Seed Supply apparently created. They are like the racer pumpkin in that they're early and they grow fast, but they are unlike the racer in that they are bigger and they are more a little bit hardier, a little more resistant to disease. Over here is a racer plus that got the short end of the stick. Something happened with the, uh, the roots, so it's probably not going to make it. But look at this one. That's a huge one. And over here, another huge root. I think this is a racer plus. Yeah, it is. Racer plus. And here we've got the pumpkin that drives me crazy. This is. Oh, it's already crawling. No, it's not. This is cargo. And I know people do videos on cargo. Cargo is a special pumpkin that's highly resistant to disease, certain disease. Uh, it's bigger than Racer Plus. It's up to 60 pounds. Racer Plus is only up to 20. But what the heck? <laughs> it For me, it blooms and then it stops growing and then it dies. So we'll see what it does this year. There's, there's one there and one over here and well actually there's a few over there that came up in the garden after I planted them because I, I started these from seed indoors in cow pots like I usually do and a few of them came up out here there's another cargo and these these seeds were a year old if you're, you're wondering why I bought seeds for a pumpkin that I hate uh, these were something I found in my stash and they all came up I still have more left. It's a little late to plant pumpkins now, but if anyone lives in a warm climate and wants to send me a self-addressed stamp down below, let me know in the in the, uh, the comments, and I will send you the rest of the the cargo seeds. Over here, we are looking at a Maxima. This is Big Moon. This is not highly disease resistant, but it is uh, up to 100 pounds or, or more. So hopefully I'll get one huge pumpkin. There's three of these. Two of them are, are a little small and one is taking over. So hopefully I'll get at least one huge pumpkin. That would be nice. Over here. Red onion. And they're doing okay, and that's a volunteer. Let me get myself out of here. Volunteer cherry tomato. That somehow got into the garden. And there's of course my lovely composter. And I will be back in a second. I want to mention about um, pumpkins before I go on. 
I, I heard from somebody that, you know, with pumpkins, you don't have to fuss. All you do is throw them in the ground, they come up, and blah, blah, blah. You don't even need that much space. Well, with short vine pumpkins, you really don't need a, a lot of space. But I would say with most pumpkins, give them a, as much space as you can and as much sunlight. And do water them well. They don't need a gallon a day, but because uh, they don't have very deep root systems. And as the season go on, goes on, water the whole plant and do it in the morning. Because they take in, as they get bigger, they take in uh, water through their leaves more than through their roots. They have very weak root systems. So uh, that's my basic advice. Also fertilize once a week. Um, any good basic garden fertilizer will do. about peonies. We've got the coleus here. This one tried to go to flower, which means it was stressed. And it, it was probably too cold for these coleus for several weeks after I put them out. It's getting very windy here. I'm trying to shield the, the microphone, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me. But there is the the miracle peony that died last year and then came to life again this year up against the house so I uh, I moved it to our peony bed here here's the peony that I put in this year it's a baby and one part of it did die but I'm leaving in the rhizome and there's the other part there and here is another baby peony I put in this year these probably won't bloom for two or three years um, if you don't want to fork out the bucks to start with, like I didn't, uh, you have to wait. And here's the peony that has been here. I thought it was dead. I planted last, uh, early last summer, and I, it never came up, and it came up this year. And here are some nasturtium. Hopefully the bunnies won't find them, and... A volunteer tomato plant. Am I looking at it? Yes. And a lot of asparagus. There we go. Which does much better if you water it a lot. I was really neglecting it last year and I got nothing this year. So hopefully next year we'll have at least one dinner of asparagus. See you in a bit. Okay, we have Camelot. Camelot looks like it's got spider mites, so I have to spray it. But, uh, and it's also got some black spot at the bottom there. So that plant may not be here long, but we'll try to enjoy it while we can. Over here, a non-hardy lavender. At least I'm pretty sure it's non-hardy. Um, it wasn't marked. And if they're not marked with the, uh, the hardiness zone that means they're not hardy they're not going to last you till next year here is earth angel my favorite rose it has a wonderful scent to it it's a little tarnishing this year I don't know what's causing that but uh, it's finally blooming so I'm happy And these are things that were here when I got here. The chives. Hummingbirds like the chi chive flowers, which is amazing. That is a hardy lavender there. That's Hidcote. And Hidcote will be here after the roaches take over. <laughs> Hidcote lasts forever. Um, let's see here. This is... This is a Grand Champion Red Rose, which I just planted a few weeks ago. And it's going to try to bloom again. That is a non-hardy lavender, I believe. Um, we did have one come back here. Yeah, I think this is a, a pink lavender. And it doesn't look very good, and it heaved out of the ground during the winter, but it has a deep root, so I'm going to let it try to come back. 
And over here we have Bellaroma, which is trying to bloom. And there's more hid coat, which is going to take over the world one day. In zone 5, it's very, very hardy. And over here we have uh, Quietness. I should have done a film on Quietness yesterday. Quietness does this now and then. It has double blooms occasionally. But uh, usually they're not. And, excuse me, when they're not, they're this classic rose look. Very faint little scent. Very pretty bush. Here's another non-hardy lavender. And we have Heritage. Still going pretty strong. Uh, these little blossoms don't last very long. Um, quietness is much more hardy. And for our last thing this week, there's a hydrangea that jumped into my cart in Myers. Didn't even know it was there, and then I checked out, and gosh darn, I had a hydrangea. So, uh, hopefully it'll be happy here. It was bone dry when I planted it. But, uh, hopefully it'll pick up with the rain and feel better and grow. And there, I don't know if you can see it, that little hydrangea has been struggling all spring to come back and I don't think it's going to do it. That's why I, I bought this one. So that's it for this week. I'll see you next time.